Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Writes Again. Um, today I'm going to discuss the fact that no one writes their own songs anymore. Call yourself an artist. Fuck off. You people are just frauds. If you can't write songs, what are you doing singing? What gives you the right to sing? Well, actually, let's face it, some of the greatest singers of all time didn't write their own songs. Elvis Presley, by and large, didn't write his own songs. Um, what about Tom Jones? Another great big voice from the 60s. He didn't really write his own songs. Um, Shirley Bassey, one of my favourite singers of all time, didn't really write her own songs. The list is nearly endless, but uh, in recent times, um, it's become even more of a phenomenon. According to Rolling Stone, hardly anyone on the pop charts writes their own music alone anymore. I think the alone part is an important distinction. There's been a little culture recently where if you write a word, you get a third, or more or less, anyway. Um, I'm sure the maths aren't quite accurate there in an instance like uh, this one, where where the artist, Justin Hawkins, has written the whole thing all by himself. Justin Hawkins writes again. In collaboration with Samantha Pierce, uh, Makina Gallegos, Cortez Boyd, Lily Shelton, um, Hallie Dennis, Naimi Taylor, Ronnie McMahon, Rihanna Valesquez, um, Yet Ayala, Lexi McLean, Armani Madden, Cody McMillan, Derek Decker and Heidi Duke. Again. Not really, I wrote that. I'm looking at this graph here which illustrates that uh, since 1999... The average number of songwriters per recording in the top 100 UK singles um, has risen from 2.95 to 4.77. That's That means it's up 160% um, in the last 20 years. Um, so the question we need to ask ourselves is, why are co-writes so much more common today than they used to be? Why isn't anyone capable of sitting down with a, a Beckstein piano and a quill pen and crafting the kind of songs that are timeless and wonderful and come from one person's mind. Is it because people are less talented? No, of course it's not that. Come on, horrible thing to suggest. Um, anyway, Diane Warren has come out and tweeted about one of Beyonce's uh, latest songs, which is called Alien Superstar. And, and she asked them, um, how can there be 24 writers on a song? Okay, so Diane Warren, who I've just mentioned... Um, she wrote Debarge's Rhythm of the Night. For the beat of the rhythm of the night, dancing to the morning light. Forget about the worries on your mind, we can leave them all behind. Oh, the rhythm of the night. You know, it's a great song. Rhythm of the night, dancing to the morning light. But she also wrote... Um, I don't want to miss a thing. The uh, Aerosmith song that was on the Armageddon Armageddon soundtrack, you know that one about a uh, great big uh, asteroid going to blow up the world, and then uh, Bruce Willis goes up there and sorts it out. Doesn't he? Uh, spoiler alert for those of you who haven't seen it: the world doesn't end, and it's all thanks to Aerosmith. Um, but that song, the really, uh, it's a beautiful song. It was written by Diane Warren, not Aerosmith. The rumour, or the legend, has it that uh, Diane Warren um, said to Stephen Tyler, oh, I'm a huge fan of yours. Please, why don't you come over to the house one day and we'll do some work. So Stephen Tyler rocks up at uh, Diane Warren's house. Diane Warren says, oh, I've got this song here, actually. Would you mind just sticking a vocal on it so I can hear what it would sound like? And he's saying, don't want to miss a thing. She then took that demo with him singing on it to the makers of the movie film Armageddon and uh, got it placed in that soundtrack. Went back to uh, Aerosmith and said, oh, you're going to have a hit if you do this one. So then they recorded it and tagged it onto the end of uh, Nine Lies, which was the album that they had coming up. Or maybe Nine Lies was already out. The chronology of it escapes me, but it was all a long time ago. The reality remains that Diane Warren wrote that song. and it, You're going to have to... I think most people would take a bit of convincing that there's a better song on that record. She's amazing. She really is. Uh, actually, one day I did meet Diane Warren. I was I was working in the 
Los Angeles in America, um, and she came up to me and she said, um, "Oh, oh, you're Justin from the Darkness. I love the Darkness. I'm a big fan actually." And then I thought, "It's going to happen to me. I'm going to go to Diane Warren's house, and she'll have a song waiting for me. I'll sing it. It'll end up in a." F- but none of that stuff happened. But she was lovely, and she's amazingly talented and brilliant. And uh, it's really funny that she uh, pointed out how many writers there are on on that Beyonce thing. Because 24 is too many. It's just too many. If there are 24 writers in there and they're trying to divvy up the uh, publishing royalties um, according to the Nashvillian tradition of whoever's in the room doing the writing gets an equal share, that would be... Each of them would get... um, Four, four point one six 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 recurring. So eventually there'll be a seven. Actually, it can't be because if you round all of them up, there'll be more than a hundred percent. I mean, you're fucked basically. No one's going to make anything unless it is on a Beyonce album, which will be huge. Probably already is huge. All twenty four of those writers are now going. Hmm. I think I'll have a Lamborghini. You know. Fair play to them. Fair play to them. They've all worked hard. I did a word each, but, uh, you know, Lambos it is. Nice one, boys. So anyway, she came out and said, how can there be 24 writers on a song? And after the initial onslaught, she attempted to quell the madness, conceding in another tweet, okay, it was probably samples that add up the number of writers. Yeah, it might be that, I suppose. Yeah, it might be that. According to the Rolling Stone, um, the solo singer-songwriter pop hit has completely disappeared in the past decade. None of the biggest tracks in the US last year were by a solo songwriter, and the year before that, zero. There's another theory about why so many people write songs. Like when you get a song with uh, five or six writers on it, then there's safety in numbers. If uh, a situation like Blurred Lines occurs, where... um, you know, they're looking for a scapegoat. Actually, that didn't that didn't really help Robin Thicke, did it? I think um, I think in that instance, everybody just went, uh, "Well, yeah, I, I mean, I worked on it. Yeah, I produced it, and yeah, I wrote it. But actually, who did all the the bad words and the, the stuff that I I kept saying, don't do it. But you know, he just did it anyway. And then <laughs> Robin, and then Robin Thicke was the one that was cancelled. But in fact. I think there was more than one writer on that. Let me just let me just Google that for a moment. Blurred lines. Who wrote blurred lines? So yeah, Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams co-wrote blurred lines um, during a three-day writing session. Oh yeah, and then Ti did some rapping on it. I think in order to avoid um, getting strung up for doing stuff like that, there's safety in numbers. Maybe maybe just um, the wisdom of the crowd. Like if there's four or five people writing a song. A concept like that of Blurred Lines, which is kind of, I don't know, it's, I, I don't know exactly what the lyric is, but obviously it's alluding to the rape culture and celebrating it in some respects. I think um, writing a song like that, when there's five people collaborating, common sense will prevail because the wisdom of the crowd will stop you from doing something like that. Um, I mean, obviously Pharrell had nothing to do with that. I mean... <laughs> His hands are clean. He he was just playing that guitar riff, which is exactly the same as the Marvin Gaye song, um, coincidentally. Um, but, you know, I think when there's four or five people involved, uh, then, you know, it do, I suppose it does round off the edges, but then we're talking about pop music. There shouldn't be edges on it. It should just be like a balloon with a face drawn on it, drifting silently through your mind, <laughs> in one ear, out the other meaningless, vacuous, disposable nonsense that nobody gives a shit about. Get get as many writers as you can in a room and then write that watery nonsense that we, none of us really care about because it's disposable pop music. If you want songs that are written from the heart, they have to be written from one heart or two at the most or, you know, the beating heart that resides within a band unit. 
But pop music, it just doesn't matter. Just get all the big guns to come and do exactly what they do on all of the pop pop songs and just keep churning it out. Yeah, it's um, it's just dog food. And we willingly lap it up. <laughs> and I waste my time wondering why it is the way it is. Well, it is the way it is because it's fucking shit. Call yourself an artist? Fuck off. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. I wrote that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and watch one of these two videos. Love you guys. Awesome.